Let's go. What it do, everybody? And thanks for tuning in to the Day by Day podcast for your Day by Day broadcast. I'm your host, Day with an I, not a Y. Do not X, Y. And today, we are joined by female fashion designer, model, soon to be actress. Ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by the one and only Lonnie. Thank you. You're welcome. That was a really nice introduction. Thank you. I, I take, appreciate that. I take pride in that. Thank you. I, I do too. Yeah. And, and this is what we're going to do first and foremost. What even brought you to the Day by Day podcast is we were talking, uh, you know, this past weekend. Shout out to Jay. Had a great birthday cookout Shout and whatnot. Um, you know, we were talking. I, I was a little drunk, but I do remember the, the basis of our conversation was you are a content creator. You have a YouTube channel, mm -hmm. which mostly consists of vlogs. Right. But you want to step into the podcast world. Correct. My my approach on getting anybody, you know, ready for anything, whether it's work, whether it's a hobby, working out, whatever, is to get thrown into the fucking lion's den. Definitely. So I said, you know what? Come on, step onto the podcast, get a feel for it, see how it goes, see how you like it. And then from there, you know, um, if it's any pointers I can give, whatever, because along this podcast journey, you will come across a lot of people that will really motivate you and help you. Okay. And I actually prayed on this last night. I was like, you know, God, just thank you for sending angels my way. Because yesterday I talked to a marketing mm -hmm. uh, major and he gave me plenty of great pointers. So it's only right that I return a favor. Absolutely. So that's why you're here. So enough about, you know, uh, me explaining why you're here. I'll just let you get into it. Um, what is it, first and foremost, that intrigues you? to want to go from being a vlogger to podcaster? I feel like it's a lot to talk about. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying that, you know, if you are a vlogger, you can't, you know, express on your, you know, your area and, you know, get the word out. But I feel like as who I am, you find yourself having conversations with your friends and shit start getting wicked. And you be like, this shit is important. It needs to be, we got to get outside. Mm -hmm. Like, and so my whole thing with being on the podcast, switching over to podcast was more so that's something that I'm more comfortable with. Like, let's get into conversation. Yeah. Let's talk about it. You're good with combo. You're good with yeah. expressing and whatnot. Yeah, let's, let's talk about it because Which, I want to make a platform to where people, it's, it's called all walks of life for a reason. Like, I want everybody to feel like, okay, I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. I'm, I can relate to this. You're good with conversation, and I checked out a few of your your vlog videos on YouTube. You're a very expressive person, <laughs> which is neat. Like it's so cringy that you're saying it. It's like cringy as hell. It's cringy. Let me ask yeah. you: Do you do you look back at like your content and vlog videos, and like do you cringe at that? I cringe a lot, mm -hmm. but I know that it was authentic, and I'm all about like process like beauty in the process so like you might do some shit like way back and like even when you look at your podcast you see where you started from it's like damn but it's like shit growth i don't watch my beginning stuff you don't no why because for a few reasons one like you said the cringe part uh -huh. and the main reason is because i was drunk as fuck <laughs> i was nervous like i would be nervous to get on camera at first which is crazy because i've always been comfortable with public speaking and camera but when I first did the podcast, I was so nervous I would get drunk and shit off Henny. Yeah. And the episodes were good, but I was drunk. I'll be fumbling my words. Okay. I'll be slurring. Yeah. So I'm like, I, I haven't even watched those fucking episodes. You know, I think it's all the, all about the process. Like, you might look at some shit and you might cringe out, but mm -hmm. it's like, damn, we came from there. We here right now. Like, you know, you see your growth. But I'm just saying, like, it's just it's hella cringy because if y'all look back at my uh. My, my vlogs. Yeah, yours goes back. <laughs> yours has. It's giving like, damn, how old was you? Yeah. How, well, God, let's, damn. Well, let's start there. How old were you when you first started the vlogs on YouTube? Um, 19. 19? Yeah, 19. Okay. And I just felt like I didn't have, like, even, I think, as I said, like, if you ever think about how you start off somewhere, it's like, you just so free, you just ready to jump in. But once you start looking at other shit and you start really looking to see your craft, it's like, you start thinking about it a little bit more, so shit start getting a little bit complicated. Yeah. Back, back then, I'm like, let's go. Like, I can do this shit. Woo. Yeah. But well, it's like. Well, you kind of still have that spirit for the podcast world that you're trying to step into, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's, sure. that's, that, doesn't, that doesn't go anywhere. Were you mm -hmm. kind of like, were you growing up like that type of kid where you would like kind of not be scared to try things? I used to be rapping. I used to be doing like dance. Like, mm -hmm. I'm a Leo. 
Shout out to all my Leos. Shout out to Leos. I like Leos. I've had a good experience with Leos. Yeah, yeah our season cool. coming up. Let's go. But mm-hmm. um, I used to just be that child. Like, my mom used to come over here, like, you know, come in the living room. Like, and my siblings be looking at me. Sometimes they be looking at me like, what the hell is she doing? But sometimes they'll be hyping me up. Like, I remember yeah. I went to Frankie's in Columbia. You know, shout out to the mate, 803. That's where I'm from, you know. But um, they had in Frankie's this little studio thing. And I went in there. I'm like, they start playing a beat. And my siblings like, go in there, go in there. I'm like. Going, going, print a CD out, play it in the thing in, in my mom's car. But it's what just were you like, doing? Rapping, singing? Yeah, I, I used to always want to be a rapper when I was little. Okay, I guess that that little that little thought. What uh, would have What would have been your 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 rapper name? <laughs> <laughs> I know you have it. <laughs> what would it have been? It would have been B, just straight B. Just straight my B. My nickname is Buttercup. Buttercup. So my mom used to be like B, like A O B. Okay. I'm like okay. Well, you should just use Buttercup. <laughs> B, you know that's too close to Beyonce. You know what I mean? That's <laughs> That's that's a that's a big competition, you know. When you're marketing, the competition is something you want to focus on, and that's a hell of a competition to go out the gate with. Listen, if I'm coming out B, I'm just coming out B. Yeah, B for they Buttercup. Gonna, yeah, and see, I'm you know I appreciate that nickname, but I'm not trying to go with that. What Buttercup? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-uh. Why they Why they call you Buttercup? Your Your skin? Yeah, my me and my siblings, we all have nicknames. So like my okay. older sister Peaches, second Cookie. Mm, mm. Me, Buttercup, my mm. brother, he just had a big-ass head, so his name was Tank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Hey, shout-out to the big heads out there, man. We holding it down, baby. We yes, holding man. it down. <laughs> um, 803 in the building, Columbia. Columbia, stand up. Okay. We outside. It is a lot of... You know what? You're like the third or fourth women I've had on here that's from Columbia. Really? Yeah. Okay. Or South Carolina in yeah, general. South but Carolina. Def, who else was from? I can't remember. But at least two other people was on from Columbia that was mm-hmm. here. Gotcha. Y'all are deep ahead. What brought you to Charlotte? It's just like when you live in Columbia, it's like the only, let me, let me, the step up that you can get mm-hmm. first, if you just kind of come out and you hungry, mm-hmm. is to go to Charlotte. You know, like I'm not going to say Columbia is about nothing. Definitely not. But I'm going to say that. Me, for instance, I'm in the fashion industry. I'm in the entertainment industry. The city is small. It's, it's more of a retirement city. Okay. We have our people in there that stand up for us. You know, shout out to PG Ra, Rennie, you know, stand up John Morant. You know, people. we got people out South Carolina in the city, you know, that, you know, stand up for us. But it's just like, if in my field specifically, you know, fashion and entertainment, it's, it's hard to, you know, get up, get up out of there. Like, yeah. you know. So you want to go to a city. That's right, so you, your step up is the city, but we we gonna get into some things. Mm-hmm. But I'm, it I'm, comes with it, you know. Coming from a small a small city like Columbia is like motherfuckers want to tell you because they passed up, their situation passed up. You know, stay here, it's not gonna work. It's too expensive, uh, and I tell people all the time, like just go. So what's hold on, Desi? If you start this shit today. Shut that shit up. So um, it's it's real easy to kind of feed into those noises, feed into those doubtful voices out there that are trying to hold you back. Mm -hmm. It's real easy to feed into it. So what kept you from feeding into it? I just always been like, I don't allow people see and then, you know, okay, let's go. Let's go. Let's go there. Line. I grew up around like, a lot of jealous, older um, people. Mm-hmm. You know, like I said, sometimes life passes up on them. And look at you, and they want to, like, pour in you. But it's like, you're not God, you know. Women? Um, people in general. Okay. They think they know everything because they situation passed up. My mm-hmm. journey and your journey has nothing to do with each other. If you know who you are, you know you was made, you know, to do something on this earth, you it's in you, it's not on you. Like so for me, for instance, like I always figure like you not you can't tell me a sh- uh, shit. Like mm-hmm. you're not God. Like yeah. I pray, you know what I'm saying? I'm 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 very close with God and I, I I speak to him and it's like I know my life is already designed out for me and it's like I'm not gonna allow your insecure ass mm-hmm. to, you know, weary me off and be like, Okay, let me stay back. Yeah. Family. No. Yeah. No to and and you was spot like, on. It, it can be it can be it can be family that'll do it too. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You know, uh, people people fall into that trap thinking that oh because it's family saying it it must be legit. 
no, sometimes the family can hold you back as well. Like you really have to be on the straight and narrow path that God designed for you. Right. Because like you said, they ain't got in no two persons in any industry, any way, shape or form made it the exact same way. Hell Nobody. No. Nope. Everyone had their own trials and tribulations of how they got there. And you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? That's so um why not Atlanta? Why Charlotte instead of Atlanta? I got family in Atlanta. It's like Atlanta, fuck with Atlanta. But mm-hmm. it's just like I definitely fuck with Atlanta for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh I got people out in Atlanta, but it's just like I want to do my own thing. Coming to Charlotte was like, you know, if you think about, you know, Columbia to Atlanta and then Columbia to Charlotte, it's kinda it's closer, you know, mm-hmm. in distance or whatever. Yeah. Um, but like even with Charlotte, I fuck with Charlotte. I've made a lot of opportunities here, and I've met network g- g- perfectly. Yeah. But it's just like it's time to go. Still. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. always time to keep going, and you know I don't like being stagnant. If I'm too comfortable, I feel uncomfortable. Ooh, damn, that was a fucking heater right there. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, cheers to it. Goddamn. How old are you, Lonnie? 22, turn 23, July 31st. Oh, so you about, you about to turn 23. Yeah. And you kicking some shit right here. Yeah. I fucks with it. She know, she know, hey, listen, she know what time it is. She said she had to step out the comfort zone mm-hmm. to really get to where she want to get to. Yeah, and the network out here in Charlotte, it is, it is on point. Like, mm-hmm. in the past, I've been out here two years now, and I've gotten further out here in the past two years of Charlotte than I did five years back home i'm from maryland okay maryland yeah so like past five years back home i've gotten much further out here like wow. easily like yeah yeah mm-hmm. the people i've met the things i've done the job i have you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying like i can network like crazy at my job and whatnot yeah um but let's let's get into the fashion design yeah yeah so let's let's talk about what you got on now first and foremost yeah the pants i like it they're mm-hmm. exquisite go ahead and break those break down everything from the from the pants Come to the now. to the jewelry Don't. the teeth jewelry let's break it all down right quick shall we well you know i i, I want to like say this though um i stepped into fashion like i've always been in the fashion Give, just give a yeah, shit. yeah. I should I should have set it up. That's my bad. How'd you even get into fashion? Yeah. So when I was when I got into fashion, like okay, growing up, like we didn't really have everything. You know, my mm-hmm. mom had four kids. She was a single mother. All of us were back to back in age. Okay. And so it was just like y'all not gonna get like you know as kids we knew already like we're not gonna get every like thing like yeah. as far as like you know clothes. Sometimes we gotta wear handy downs. You know, going into the school year, shoot, yeah. we, we gotta do what we gotta do. Oh yeah, it's just it. like I always knew like I was always like a popping person. Like mm-hmm. I always was like I'm just gonna pop it regardless, you know. Mm-hmm. And um, growing up, whatever we had to, like you know wear the same put back to school and stuff like that. But me, I'm like okay, shit. I wore this shirt last year. Mm-hmm. Mommy can only afford us you know a certain amount. Guess what? I'm this shirt, this dress is going into a, a, a top. A top. Mm-hmm. And so I always used to cut my clothes and like make them to, you know, what I wanted it to look like. That you would day. Al- alter the things. Yeah, always. Just yeah. straight cut. Like, yeah. no, so I, I know nothing about sewing. My grandmother, both my grandmothers, they crochet and sew and all types of stuff. Mm-hmm. But I used to just make my own clothes or whatever. And, you know, I dibbled it out with a lot of stuff in between the years after that. But then, you know, when I started, like, shout out to uh, my stylist, Najla Yasmin. She's a stylist. My best friend. Okay. Um, but she really got me back on board with like you know how like you know you got something in you, but it's like it takes somebody to just like, you know, have a conversation with you or you know, really connect with you or let's go right here or let me style like you know, to make bring, something for to, me to, to bring, bring that next, out of you. Yeah, bring the next level out. And we started we kept we became friends last year and she was like, You got like sal, whatever. Like she's like, Where'd you get this from? I'm like, girl, I made this. Yeah. And she's like, huh? And she turned me up, and I turned her up because she's a stylist and I'm a designer. Ah. And, and from there, I just felt like it's. I always tell people all the time, like especially as a fashion designer, it's like people get get too caught up in like the theatrics of things, which is like, okay, how much is the pants that you got on, the shorts that you got on right now? It's like it doesn't matter. You're rocking them. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter. Like long as you putting that shit on, you wearing what you got on. I don't give a fuck. Like I got to people, I said I could wear a trash bag. Mm. Okay, Missy Elliott, put that shit on. Uh, uh. Uh, uh, put that shit on. What's the difference between the designer and a stylist? Oh my god, great question. A stylist is like, it's like I dap you up right now. Like we about to go crazy. Like you the fashion designer, I'm a stylist. You put that shit together. I'm gonna grab it from you. I'm gonna put that shit together on this specific personality or a person. Oh okay. It's like you 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 really put that shit. Like you make that shit, and I'm gonna put it on. 
specifically. You know, like I'm gonna put it together, okay. coordinate it. Yeah. And that's the difference. And that's why I said like when a fashion designer and a stylist like me, I don't acclaim myself to be a stylist. I'm not a stylist. I could probably, you know, put you in some shit, but I'm not a stylist. I make the clothes. I'm not styling you. Okay, so if let me let me try to break this down mm -hmm. like a fourth grader. Okay. What was that show? Smarter than the fifth grader? <laughs> let me try to break this down like a fifth grader. So a stylist mm -hmm. will supply the supplies and you put the supplies together accordingly to the person or the vibe, or is it mismatch? Yeah, I would say a little bit of mismatch. So it's like, for instance, like I got some shit that I'm doing for my birthday, like Everybody will be in El Rain on my birthday because that's going to be the pre-launch of, you know, the first collection, which is Lavelle Lamar. Break that down. Everybody will be in what? Say that again. El Rain. El Rain. Yes. Is that your... That's, that's like my line name. Okay. Yeah. Is it everything out or is it launching? It's coming. Okay. Because everything is handmade, okay. you know, to your, like I always say, <clears> like, it's, it's like to your gratification. Okay. And I always say that, like... Whatever you, however you want it, I can do that for you. And so I'm coming out, uh, Lavelle and Lamar, Lavelle skirts, Lamar pants, and we can get into that later, the names behind that. Okay. But um, so back to like your question or whatever, is like, I'm going to make these outfits or whatever. I'm going to make these these pieces. And then Naja is going to go in and she's going to actually like take those pieces and style them on each person. Okay. So I had it, I had it backwards. Yeah. Okay. I see what it is then. Yeah. Okay. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Did you make the pants you have on now? I wish. Yeah. These I, pants. Yeah. These pants. They they're thrifted. Thrifted. I thrift a lot. Nice. Mm -hmm. What's some um What's some banging thrift stores out here? I would say um well listen y'all so because people thrifting thrift stores is some thrift stores are overrated. I, I definitely say like even on a university if you go to that play those on a university they got hella shit at the at the Lake Harbor joint yes okay they got plenty of Boardwalk. stuff and it's like people and yeah I know which where you at yeah, mm -hmm. they, yeah it's that thrift store is really good too but you just gotta go in there you just you go crazy like if you have style for real mm -hmm. you could put anything together anything let me tell you something I got about three shirts <laughs> listen so my grandparents had all grandsons okay one granddaughter mm -hmm. so it's me like. Four of my cousins and like two of my brothers were all around the same size. Okay. For years, there have been t-shirts that have been recycled amongst about six of us. Definitely. Like constantly. <laughs> I got one right now. Matter of fact, I think I got this off my cousin Marcus. Now that I'm shout speaking, out to Marcus. Yeah, shout out, shout out to Rocco. <laughs> what up, baby? Shout out to Rocco. I think this polo sports shirt came from my cousin Marcus now that I'm thinking about it. Because I damn, I damn sure didn't buy this. It looks good. Thank you. That's, yo, we will recycle. I got a Warriors t-shirt in there that came off my cousin Alex. And I think before him, it came off my cousin Marcus. Mm -hmm. We be, listen, like you said, put that shit on. Put it on. Make it pop. Well, I would say put it on the flow. Yeah. Shit, if you popping it, put it on the flow. Yeah. Uh, speaking of mulatto, let's let's talk about that for a second. Yes. <laughs> Female rappers have taken over the game. Don't get me started. I want to. I want to get you started. I'm pushing the start button. <laughs> Female rappers have taken over the fucking game. But let's talk about it. But but part of being a host of Day by Day by Day podcast means I have to be devil's advocate. But y'all have taken over the game. But let me ask you something. Let's go. For the first time in 30 years, not a single record or album has reached the top of the Billboard list in hip hop or rap. Is there any correlation between that and female artists being on top of the rap game? <laughs> yeah. That's what the fuck we do over here. You're asking me, mm -hmm. is there any correlation? You said there hasn't been any. Can we repeat that that part that you just said? Absolutely. Chunk? There's not... For the first time in 30 years, they're mm -hmm. not there has not been a number one record or album on the Billboard 100 list for the first time in 30 years in rap or hip hop. Okay. Is there any correlation between that and female rappers taking over the game? Basically, is it their fault? <sighs> Damn, I might need a little bit more drink for this one. Be truthful. Cause you're going, I, I, you're going to get attacked by one side or the other, but regardless of your answer. And I'll give mine too. You ain't on this ship alone, but listen, I'm a, I'm a speak for all aspects. Um, 
I'm I'm a I'm a huge advocate for female rap. Like, mm -hmm. just don't even get me into that because we can go into that forever. Mm -hmm. I love female rap. I don't know what's about it, but I've always been attracted to it. I love it. I feel like female rap has dominated, mm -hmm. and it's it's unusual. Like, I feel like back then, like even before my time, it's been like the niggas has been coming in and just popping that shit and just up there, and it's like. And always be, you know, behind every, you know, male group or like male artist always been that hot female rapper under, but he's still dominating. She's behind. Correct. Where we're at right now is, you know, women period are just jumping out the box and it's, it's really crazy. By themselves. By themselves. So it's like, once again, that is the visual representation of female females having to, you know, do that harder. Um, You got to work. Work harder. Mm -hmm. I think it's exciting for female rap that, like, even when you say that, mm -hmm. even like that fact, because mm -hmm. that's a fact. Yeah. <laughs> it 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 doesn't, you know, move female rap to a lower standard. It only just proves the point of like how like if you really out here doing this shit, like like a lot of these females is out here and they grinding and eating. Mm -hmm. It's gonna take a little bit more as a female. You know what I'm saying? And then that just means um, what what where we at with male rap then? It's fucking garbage. That's where we're at with it. <laughs> where we at? I mean, Future and Drake and Cole, they can only do it with so much, mm -hmm. you know? And I fuck with Lil Baby, but Lil Baby sound the same to me. That's just me personally. I fuck okay. with him. I think he's hard. I think yeah, he goes definitely. hard, but a lot of his shit sound the same. So let me ask you this. Okay. You love female rap and whatnot. So what do you say for the mostly male audience who say female rap now it's just talking about the same thing fucking and getting a bag and taking a not necessarily robbing a nigga but getting money from a nigga fucking and whatnot and they downgrade it because of the topics what do you say to that i think that you should open your mind a little bit more because we've been talking about that Good point. <laughs> go back and listen to Lil kim i was already saying shout out kim yeah shout out to Lil kim shout out you know um Foxy, you know, Nicki Minaj, you know, my favorite rapper on this entire earth. Onika Mirage, Tanya, Tanya Mirage. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Don't know disrespect, Barb, don't come at me. So she's the GOAT? Nicki's Nicki the GOAT. Minaj is the GOAT. The GOAT female artist. I, I, I believe so as well. She is the GOAT to me. Yeah, like, I think when, so. you know, when I grew up, like, my mother, she loved Lil' Kim. That's where I got female rap from. It's like Foxy, Lil' Kim. My mama liked that dirty, I, I don't even want to say trifling, because, it, but it was just so like, they was they was, they was, they was they was hood. Foxy and Kim was hood. They was hood as yeah, fuck. Yeah, Foxy now. Especially Fox. Especially Fox. Foxy was one of the ones. You know, Foxy yeah. came in and she she dominated as well as excuse me a lot of female rappers. But Nicki Minaj, I'm going to forever stand on. You know, mm -hmm. Onika Tanya Mirage. Like, I fuck with it. You kind of you kind of give me like a Foxy vibe, just a little bit. Just a I love bit. Foxy. Yeah, you give me a Foxy vibe. I feel like a she's bit. one of those. She was one of those ones. Like, I used to go back and look at her and, like, you know, Charlie Baltimore. Like, I'm really into female rap. Yeah, you know your shit. You <laughs> like, said about Charlie really, Baltimore. You know your shit. I'm really into female rap. Like, I love... I just, like... And even as, like, a young girl, I used to go on YouTube and just, like, type in, like, oh, I just want to watch, like, the vintage videos in the Light? studio. I love MC Light. Roxanne like, Shantae? Roxanne Shantae. I'm not too familiar with Roxanne. I can't um, even see her a lot of you. Okay. She she was around the same time as MC Light. Okay. With, like, you know, that whole, that whole era and whatnot. Uh, okay. Roxanne Shantae. I don't know her side. Wait, Roxanne, she had a movie Roxanne. on Netflix called Roxanne. Yeah, that's her. The, okay, that's her. yep. Roxanne I've Shantae. I watched that, yep. Yep, yep. She was, yeah, she was good. Um, You got Salt and Pepper, of course. Yeah, Salt and Pepper. You Queen Latifah. Queen, yep, yeah. yep. Okay. Shout out to Queen Latifah. I love Queen Latifah. I fell in love with her watching Living Single. Mm, okay. I'm an old soul. Yeah, like. goddamn. You're 20, you sure you're 22? <laughs> You talking about some shit that I this grew shit up This shit is crazy, y'all. Okay. <laughs> this All shit right. is really crazy. All it right. really is. It's All right. crazy, I fuck with it. I fuck it's with crazy. it. It's crazy. It's crazy. Right. Lil' Kim or Foxy, pick one. Oh, my God. Oh. Yeah. I'm going to have to say Foxy. Why so? Only because Foxy, I like that Um, when she say the ooh, nah, nah, uh, you know, she got her Caribbean vibe. I like mm -hmm. Caribbean rappers that mm -hmm. can, you know, do, you know, versatile verses and stuff like that. That's why I love Nicki Minaj because Nicki Minaj can go theatrical. She can go pop, gospel, whatever. Everyone want her to do, she's going to spit it. But no, I'm going to have to say Foxy, though. Like I feel like Foxy, most utmost respect. Like Yeah, I fuck with Fox, too. All right, so um, 
Well, you obviously have good, uh, good taste, good context behind you. Yeah. So I just had to, I just had to fill that at first to see if you even be good for a podcast. So far, so good. I, I think so, and I think people tuning in, whether you're watching or listening, I think you could agree as well. Definitely. So, um, what would be the? You said the name of it. Can you repeat it again? All walks of life. All walks of life. All right. Yeah. So, what would be like the, the the basis of your podcast, if you would? Reality. Yeah. Which is like reality is a little bit, um, it's not common. Like people don't understand, like, you know, I want to have uncomfortable conversations. And if you tap in, you will definitely benefit from it because we need to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's a lot of stuff that like me, for, for one, I'm a free spirited person. Okay. I don't, I always say like, I'm, who am I? Like, I know I'm somebody, but I'm not God. I'm not going to judge you off your, you know, your experiences or, you know, what you had to do or yep. now if, if you, if you, if you kill somebody, mm -hmm. you did something bad. So like, I don't know. We might. Well, I was going to say, you, you might want to judge that. <laughs> if I, if I, if I kill someone, you might want to judge that. Like, you know, you're saying in general, just general we all, stuff. We all like, have I'm not trying to sit here and think, oh, I can't. Oh no. You know, that's never been me. I feel like, you know, Let's talk about this stuff, and this stuff is real life. Like we get so much sometimes caught up in like unrealistic shit. Yeah, especially um, with social media. Like it's, yeah. everything's so unrealistic. The real world is much bigger than social media. It's so big. Much much bigger. Yeah, but people definitely. feel fail to realize that because they're stuck in the phones. I cha yeah. I challenge y'all listening right now. Go to your, your your settings and analytics and look at how much screen time you've used on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever social TikTok. Look at how much time you've used on that compared to how much time you went for a walk. You know what I'm saying? You talked to someone, you interacted with someone, you met someone new. Just compare and contrast because that's where the fuck we are now. No, seriously. The world is much bigger, but we think social media is bigger than the world, it's unfortunately. It'll never be. Nah. I'm sorry. So, um, okay, I'm, I'm getting it. Like it's, it's like, you know, bringing the real world to, you know, people that need to hear it. So mm -hmm. let's say... Um, you were to start an episode tomorrow. What do you think would be like the context behind it? Ooh, let me think. Let me pick through all this. Yeah, you, you can I pick. got so much shit up my sleeve. Yeah, I, I would have to start off with. Um, God damn, I got so much. I, I would. I would. I, will, I have to say Toxic Church. I have like a segment I want to do. It's called Toxic Church. Toxic Church. Yeah, I like it. Break that down. It's, it's basically like, you know, when I grew up in the church, you know, I had some in and outs. After my mom died, like, I moved with my grandparents, and they were so holy. Like, how we looked at them on the outside, like, wow, they're so holy. But, like, I always knew that it was something off with them. Mm. Like, I always knew that, like, y'all got so much shit going on inside this house. But it's like, when y'all come outside, I put y'all suits on. Yeah. And, you know, my granddaddy, he's the deacon, and it's just like, everything is so perfect now. And then, you know, with living with my grandma, grandparents and things like that, be going to Bible school, uh, you know, uh, Bible study, you know, vacation Bible school, everything like that, Sunday school. And it's just like you realize that, like, these people that you're around, they're monsters. And then they're creating, like, you just realize basically, like, you're you're in a situation where as a child you think that this is, like, the best right thing for you to do and this is how you're going to make it in life. Yeah. But you only sit back and realize that this is going to tear me down. Like, mm. this is my worst. Wow. So... Like, <clears throat> Toxic. So based off of that realization, yeah, uh, what would you say would be the best alternative? I say that uh, don't get too caught up in the theatrics of church. You can fellowship. Like I don't really like to go in too much into religion because I'm not educated in every you know side of religion. But I know my my you know my religion. I feel like you know I praise to the Most High, which is God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like I'm God fearing, and for me, it's like I don't need to go to church you know, to fellowship. Mm. And even with that even statement, it gets, if you were sitting in front of a Christian, like, what the hell you mean you ain't going to church? Yeah. Every time. But no, this is real life. Mm. And it was like, I saw people that were gay coming to church get shunned away. I saw people that were pregnant coming to church get shunned away. I saw people that was fucking in the church, you know, mm -hmm. motherfuckers sleeping with each other. Like, I seen this shit at a young age. And, you know, I'm seeing how just corrupt it was. And people use, you know, that, platform or you know that that space that god has give, given us the fellowship and you know love on each other and try to you know uplift each other to use it to basically like boost their ego mm -hmm. their toxic ego on yeah. other people yeah. if that kind of makes sense no i, I get what I you're saying I, I, it's, it's a lot 
You I, you hear about it. Yeah. I personally have never witnessed it. Right. I've been to a few churches growing up. I wasn't heavy, heavy into the church. It was yeah. one church my grandmother took me into a lot growing up, but it was a big church. So it mm-hmm. was a lot of people in and out. So it wasn't like really crazy. It was community based, but it wasn't to the point where like, you know, a smaller church where everyone knows everyone. Yeah. Everyone knows everyone's dirt. Yeah. You know, good, bad, whatever may have you. I never been in those type of yeah, churches. It and it's crazy. And it's and it's different yeah. in the South. So no, was, definitely. Yeah, yeah. you you was it's in South sure. Carolina. Like yeah. it's it's different. You know, like <laughs> yeah. people know about them southern, the southern you know, church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've never been in that environment. So I can't say, but I've heard about it. But that's I just say that to say that, you know, you're saying, you know, it may sound crazy. No, you sound on yeah. point. Like people haven't been definitely. talking about it for years for nothing. Nobody t- like I think I I I, met, I brought this up. Um I was about to start filming a show called On the Rise Charlotte. And um this I was explaining it to people like I brought the like you know I brought the proposal up you know to the producers stuff like that about like you know talk to church and everybody was like everybody really grabbed on to the subject yeah. like people had so much to say like you know from their you know experience and I was yeah. like wow like this shit is like serious like yeah. I thought in my head you know wow like to see you know I have a friend who was sexual harassed in the church I have a friend mm-hmm. who was you know bisexual and he had the child with the a woman before she. They were married, and motherfuckers say they can't cut something to sing the choir. Like, mm. just stupid shit. That's I feel like it's just like, come on. I remember the first time I've even heard of a certain term which referred to a woman that gave a lot of head came from a kid group in church. Shorty was, we was probably like 12 or 13, yo. So we're playing like, we were playing some type of game where you raise your hand and like yeah. confess something. <laughs> We're like 12 or 13, mind you. Yeah. And this girl, I remember, she rose her hand and said, I'm a bobblehead. We're like 12 or 13 in a church kids group. And like, I didn't get it at first, but she said it. And then like, she kind of like did some type of gesture. And then like, later on, I realized like, oh shit. This is where we're at. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, isn't this supposed to be? But okay. that just goes to say with, you know, it's it's not all peaches and cream. No, you know what seriously. I'm saying? Like she can get wicked. That, that was a great song, by the way, one twelve peaches and cream. Yeah. Um, but um, so something else that's let's let's talk about just subjects around church and I want to get your opinion on it. Yeah. Um let's see, what goes down in the church that they shun, if you would. Um, isn't it like kind of frowned upon to shack up shackle up before marriage in the church is definitely is, oh, but okay so <laughs> let, what was you about to say definitely but what people that shun upon that shit the same motherfuckers that you know what i'm saying got married fast as hell to be not shunned upon but you still get mistreated cheated on and just don't have no self-respect mm. so who's really falling apart right now yeah <laughs> Well, it, well, yo, it was it was different back in the day. We can call it how it is. It was much different. Our, my grandparents got married at like 19, 20. Same. You know what I'm saying? So it was different back. 19, 20 getting married now was like, what fuck, the fuck? No. Yeah, no. You know what I mean? Like now, I mean, men, it's usually older, but women, I, I don't know. What what age? What age? How You're 22. Would you like to get married? No. No? No. All right. Let's, let's go there then. Let's I might go. need some more. To let's go there. Is your cup good? Do you need my, some more? Yeah, my cup's empty. Do you need some more? Yeah. All right. Let's let's, let's take a, let's take let's a, take a little break. intermission. Yeah. Let's go. We're here, Lonnie. We're here. We outside. We are the fuck I think outside. I'm, I, so let me, see, I told my home girl today. I said, let's, let's stop being humble. If you know you that, stop being humble. Talk I, that shit. I ain't gonna lie. For half a second, I thought you was gonna bluff. Bluff like what? Come in here. Cause when I hit you when I DM you, I was like, Are we still good? You you respond like 40 minutes later. But I was like, okay, bet. Because when in 40 minutes, I'm like, damn, yeah. it's happened. I've had No, definitely. You, I, listen, I definitely didn't want you to think that. As a podcaster, you'll have no shows. Mm-hmm. It happens. But yeah. I'll tell you right now. Let me look in the camera. I'll tell you right now. If you hit me up to come on day by day podcast and are a no call, no show, or you bluff with no explanation, you're shunned. And you me, will no longer be invited. Mm, you're fucking shunned. Never again. Um, so anyway, let, let, let's get back to the juice. Mm-hmm. And I'm not talking about this wine either, even though it does taste like grape juice. And I can't say the name of the wine because we're not yet sponsored by a wine But you company. will be. Yeah, it's on the way. All right, so you said that you do not want to get married. Not right now. Well, what is it? Not right now or not ever? Uh, 
uh, I'm, I don't know. I'll just lie. Okay, so right now, if I were to ask you right now, Lonnie, would you want to be married? Your answer is no. no but it no, sounds no. like it's subject to change maybe one day. Never or, say never. Never say never. Okay, but more so leaning towards no. No, yeah. All right, well, let's get into it. Uh, why is that? <laughs> oh, Lord. I don't know. I feel like... Um, I'm Let me okay. stop you right there. Let's go. I don't want to hear what you feel like. Okay. I want to hear what you see for what it is. You get me? I'm just I'm just giving you a little advice. People will take you more serious if you don't start with I feel, I feel like. like. Okay. I mean, so let me be let me be. Let me Shout be out to Professor Laurie at Bowie State. He taught me that. Shout out. Professor Laurie, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So listen. Mm -hmm. I am a very self-reflective person. I self-reflected. I, I feel like I'm young, you know. I don't like how I think about this and and take this however you want. But you know, God made a beautiful big old green earth, you know, and there's plenty of fish out here. Mm -hmm. And you know, yeah. I don't like to subject my shit myself and my whole shit and everything to one person at, at this time in my life. I feel like I'm young and Let's go. Like, I'm not, like, focused on that. Now, if I meet that and that happens, well, let's go. Because I, I think I'm, I'm learning how to be more affectionate. Like, I'm learning that love is okay. Because I, I don't want to say I didn't come from love my mother, she loved me. She showed me that. Did you just not be raised in but a crazy affectionate I didn't, house? I, didn't re I was never raised in a house where, like, oh, wow, love is okay, maybe? Mm -hmm. Like, so, I, I always thought you had to go through all this hard shit to, you know, and, and, in your household, did you, your grandparents who raised you, right? Mm -hmm. Your siblings, did y'all say, I love you a lot? My mother in the household of my mother. Okay. But once you got to the grandparents, not as much. No. Okay. They were like that evil. Must, that must be an old school. Oh, okay. Well, I was <laughs> I was ready to compare it to mine. Mine aren't evil. Yeah, but I was yeah. already said that must be an old school thing because my grandparents were the same. Like they, even my mom said like growing up, she never like heard or saw them being crazy affectionate or whatnot. So maybe that's an old school thing, but yeah. continue. Yeah. I grew up in like a uh, like I always want to say like I, I always have to like separate when, when I say I grew up mm -hmm. like I said the first half of my life before when I was before like my mother died which was 16 years old okay I felt really affectionate love like I felt like my mother just was like my biggest supporter she was yeah. everything when my mom died we had to transition like me and my siblings have to transition our lives into like another life which was like new school new phone like don't you would never have any friends that you knew back then and like this is your new life yeah and it's just like going from like a love and affectionate situation from like, what the hell is this? Yeah. And toxic and plot and plotting and trifling type energy is like, and it turns you like, unfortunately, into a person of survival and defense to where like, it's like, mm -hmm. I don't trust you. Prove okay. yourself to me <clears throat> or else. And even if you still prove yourself to me, I still won't trust you. Okay. Yeah. So let me try to dissect this if I could. Yeah. Dr. Day. So <laughs> it sounds like based off of the... Uh, upbringings in the household of your grandparents. Mm -hmm. It was non affectionate. Um, you know, you you felt the the you how you call it the plotting that mm -hmm. came with it. You just felt the you know the sneaky shit that came with it. Hell yeah. That was complete opposite of what you were used to when being raised by your mom. Definitely. So because of what happened, how long did you live with your grandparents? For about three years. So those three years built a wall, if you would, mm -hmm. and rightfully so. I mean, it's just natural defense mechanisms for any living thing to defend off something yeah. that they're uncomfortable with. Definitely. So you built that wall, if you would, and it sounds like the wall is still up. But, Definitely. but if you come across something that reminds you of home in a sense of with your mom. Yeah. Then you'll go, okay, I'll give that a shot. Well, come on, Dr. Day. <laughs> Let's go. We in this motherfucker. All right. Shit, I don't got to pay for therapy. I'm right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, shit. I mean, it kind of is. And then with the with the podcast that you want to do, it will be a form of therapy because you're bringing real Definitely. shit Definitely. to life. You'll have someone yeah. in the church world who recognizes the toxic shit that happens into it. And when he or she comes along and y'all talk about that, 
they've been wanting to get that off their chest for, for years. years. It's like let's let's talk about it. And they had no one to come to until you. So you you yourself will realize that you will be a, in a way a therapist as well. Damn. Um, but no, that's that's very common. Yeah. That's very common. Mm-hmm. Uh, very common. So, have you gone to therapy? No. Okay. Well, I recommend it first and foremost. But mm-hmm. that is very common. Just to be in that world, like our household, definitely shows up in the dating world. Definitely. Like in how we wow. treat the opposite sex, like one thousand percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're good though. Cause, this is crazy. Yeah. I'm yeah. You. I think you'll be good. You got a good head on your shoulders or whatnot. I just think it'll. I just ask this of you, Lonnie. Mm-hmm. I just ask this. I just ask that. When that time does come mm-hmm. where you meet a guy, um, I just ask that, you know, really, first off, break it down to him, your circumstances. Yeah. So that he can be understanding and maybe he'll be a little bit more patient, but don't push him away because of your past experiences. Right. And that's, and that's you know, like you can hear that and be like, okay, I won't. But it's, I've seen it so many fucking times. Yeah. Whether it, whether I've been with a girl who's done that or I've seen it happen to a friend or I've just seen it happen in general, mm-hmm. like men and women. Yeah. But, you know, I think women can be just a little bit more defensive and be quicker to ghost if something reminds them of something in the past. Yeah. Right? So I just ask that you don't let that fuck up a great thing because then your ass will be back hollering at him, talking about some hey, big head, four to ten years later when he doing this thug easy. You know what I mean? What's up, big head? How you doing? Yeah, yeah. Listen, you remember me? Yeah, so don't... He gonna be like that. Yeah, yeah. So just I just (laughs) ask that, you know, you just off bucks, let them know what it is. Be like, hey, I'm not all the way comfortable with this type shit. I'm getting loose to it. I'm getting used to it. I think you're someone that can help bring it out of me. I'd like to go down that journey if you'd like to accompany accompany me. And you know what, Dave? I think that what you said is now was like absolutely on point. Like, I'm not going to like negotiate what you're saying. But what I will say is that besides what you're saying on the other side, men, don't think that you are going to, you know, if you're interested in a woman... That is confident, and you know that's holding her weight, her own weight. And I'm talking about pressure. Mm-hmm. Don't ha- come half stepping, cause like if you see what's in front of you, you don't half step what's in front of you. You gonna apply that pressure. You gonna act accordingly, and it's because as a woman, some women, mm-hmm. we 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 see what's in front of us. We gonna act accordingly. As a man, you you niggas, I want y'all ego boost it. You said don't try to ego boost it? You niggas want y'all ego boost it. Gonna try to ego boost it. Y'all want an ego boost every time. And if it's like, if a female's not, e- you know, boosting y'all ego, y'all feel threatened. Now y'all jealous and now y'all mad and now y'all insecure. And now it's like, night night. It's it's, well, not, it's nothing. Well, first and foremost, that's why I, I'm single personally mm-hmm. by choice. Because mm-hmm. right now I could pick up my phone and hit up three different people and be in a relationship if I wanted to. But... A relationship is very fucking serious, serious to me. You know what I mean? Like the way, it's serious. yeah, the way I see it. If I'm not, I'm not looking to get married either. Mm-hmm. As of now, yeah. like you said, never say never. Right. But if I were to, you know, I, I, I always say I got. I'm 28, and people ask, "Oh, marriage, kids?" I'm like, "Shit, I got five to seven in me." Because I just, <laughs> I'm talking about years. It, I say that because that's when I <laughs> no plan. Questions. Yeah, that's when I plan to be. At a very high standard, monetarily, mentally, spiritually, emotionally. I can't get in a relationship now because I'm still not the best me. You hear that, ladies? Ladies, be more like, date men more like they and niggas be more like they. And you motherfuckers don't understand the, that right there, what you just said is the main point of all this right now is what's mm-hmm. going on. Like dating. Well, it's because they have no substance. So it's like, you know, what are, they're not waiting on anything. That's why they want to jump into the yeah, shit okay. now because they don't have Let's any go. substance. Nah, my substance is just now trickling. Yes. But I but but I've I've planted a seed that got me to the point where I'm at now mm-hmm. years ago. Mm-hmm. I know where it's going. I know I know I ain't nowhere near the peak. Right. You know what I'm saying? Some niggas peaks was back in high school. So yeah. it's like what they got to wait for. They already, right. you know what yeah. I mean? Okay. So that's that. But yeah, like I'm just I just have to really be the full me because the way I see it, if I get, I've only been in one and a half relationship my whole life. 
<laughs> it's not a joke. Uh, it's not. It's not a joke. It's I'm, just like I only really laugh because like when I tell people, they're like, <laughs> "Oh, you say never, the same." You, like, you I only have... been in one relationship in my whole life. Oh, you only been in one, and it was only like I dealt with this particular person, like. Yeah. For you know a year and some change, but we were never together for the change. Well, you're still pretty young. Yeah. So, I so mean, that's my that's whole not, point. I'm that's like, not, how long were y'all together for? Um, we were together from eighteen to twenty. Two years. Yeah. That's decent, I guess. It was. It was. It was. It was a lot. And we I are the like, same age. Yeah. Okay. And then after him, then you know. You've you've been enjoying life. You know, just dating. Or what? Well, I don't know. Is it <laughs> since then? Have you been dating, or have you been like kind of like brushing dudes off? Like, what has it been? Oh Lord, you trying to get in my day? <laughs> what? Yeah, because I don't know. You saying I know? I really don't. I'm not going to sit there act like I don't know. It could be because it's always one or the other. It's it's you got girls, you got pretty ass girls. I heard you be like, yo, what are pretty ass girls that just be down for they shit? <laughs> Some of them be ducked off and don't talk to nobody. Don't go nowhere. Don't do nothing. Just be putting that shit on a shelf. <laughs> Yeah, putting on the show. Yeah, and then I, and then there's some girls who you know date, and when I say date a lot, I'm not saying they out here fucking everything. Yeah, but I'm just saying you know going on dates, exploring their options and whatnot. So right, I yeah, want to know absolutely. what what is it with you, Lonnie? It's it's been um, it's been a fun time. Like I would not lie, I feel like I've been outside like lately. Okay, I'm like I'm a beautiful woman. That you are. Thank you, mm -hmm. and I feel like I'm you know my. Thing is, like, you know, I am that person. I'd be like, a nigga asked for my number or something like that. I'm like, why? What we about to do? What's up? I don't have, I'm not trying to play with you because I don't want, you know, I don't want to sit in front of you and be your muse and you're nothing. Like, you, okay. you get what I'm saying? Like, it's not going to work, you, you know. I feel like, but lately I've been outside, you know, I've been dating. You know, I've, I've been taking a few numbers, you know. Mm -hmm. So you say when a guy asks you for a number, you're like, well, what do you have to bring? So for the guys that do end up getting your numbers, um, what separates it? Like what what does it take for a guy to ask for Lonnie's number for Lonnie to say, you know what, I'll give you a shot? I think it's like the whole like thing that came about it. Like, if I give you my number, it's like, how did you how was this whole how experience right now? Okay. Like, like how did how did this happen between us? And it's just like me, I'm a person. If I want it, I'm going to get it. You know, if I have my eye on you, you mine. But, you know, with men, they... Well, well, let me ask you this. You say if you want it, you get it. You have your eye on the man, he's yours. Okay? <laughs> There's two ways that that can happen. So I want to know which one of the two ways Lonnie is right now. <laughs> Are you the type, you see a dude, you want him. Are you the type to approach him? Or are you the type to reel him in with the eyes? I'm an eyes girl. Okay. Like, I have a little thing I got, you know, especially if we out after the club, mm -hmm. you know, everybody feeling good. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a nice situation. Mm -hmm. I might look at you. You know, you, you might have definitely, you know, look back at me. Mm -hmm. We're here right now. It's mm -hmm. like, I'm looking at you like, you know, what's up? And mm -hmm. I feel like I, me, myself, I'm not trying to, like, play no games. Like, if I want, like I said, I'm going to. I'm gonna apply it, but it's like nine times out of ten, mm -hmm. you have already, you know, walked your way over to me, and we, you know, nine times out of ten, you really mean with the eyes. Yeah, I really mean with the eyes. Yeah, the eyes get them every time. Well, let me. I go like a little. Let me see. What do you do? I do look like into a that camera and give it. Yeah, I do like a little. Um. Oh wow! Oh, you gotta do a look. She did the look down. You gotta do up. a look down, look up. Oh man! And then you know. Oh yeah. man! No, that first one was on point. You tilt the neck to the side. Exposing of the neck is a very we are we are mammals at the end of the day. You know, how like some like birds do some shit to kind of yeah. like attract mates. When women free game for my fellas, when women expose that neck, my boy, my boy, my boy, it ain't for nothing. That's all I'm gonna say. So when she tilt that head, expose that neck, that's number one. And if a two, you saw how Lonnie did the look down and look up. If she look, if she check you, like look you down and up. Yeah. That right there? What's up? Man, listen. You in there I'm like drugs. And I'm not one of them girls like, you know how like girls are like, I like the quiet nigga in the back. Mm -hmm. That's not me. I don't like the rowdiest nigga ever. No, absolutely not. It's a fine line. It's, it's, it's the a, presence. Yeah, it's the presence of like, how are you stepping? Because mm -hmm. like, when I step in the building, I, you know, I am who I am. How, mm -hmm. how are you coming? And mm -hmm. I like confidence is everything to me. I like a confident man. So. Well, it's quality that attracts quality. Because you... 
a quality woman would like a man that's like you said, stepping has a good presence, not too loud, not, but not quiet. Right. But then you got lower quality women that are attracted by the loud dudes. You know what I'm saying? And they realize they end up with a clown type dude clown. and all that. But it's it's quality to match quality. You know what Definitely. I'm saying? That's all that is. Definitely. You on point. You're 22. What the fuck? You on My mama point. always told me I was wise. Yeah, She's yeah. She's always coming. I just never understood that. And so I, I just, you know, started getting amazed. I'm like, oh, yeah. wow, I'm actually pretty wise. Plus, I think that's that Southern shit. I think Southerners in general, y'all are just right. a little bit more, yeah. you know, relaxed and mellowed out and peep shit for what it is, which hence makes you just become a little bit more, more mature. Definitely. Uh, Columbus, Mississippi. Born. Family out there. Shout out to Columbus, Mississippi. Mississippi. Amen. Family out in Birmingham, Alabama. You know, we all through the country. Oh, yeah. You're really Southern. Southern as hell. What separates a Southern girl from a non-Southern girl? Ooh, please. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Listen. Let's get these I got New York too much. I got too many of no friends. Let's get these New Yorkers <laughs> upset for a second. <laughs> Let's get hey, let's, oh. let's press a button. Hey, listen, come on. Let's come on now. Y'all listen. <laughs> you you tell me. I want to hear from the horse's mouth. What separates a southern woman from a non-southern woman? Damn, come on. You, you, you gotta give me some shit now. But guess what? We we, we here. This is where we at right now. Um, I would say the first things first is that like what I've learned, you know, shout out to I have Helen up north friends and you know, my sisters, um, uh, but you know, we we go through this thing where it's like they popping they up north shit. I'm popping my down south shit. Like you know, say how country is hell. You know, yeah, we country. We 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 don't have a. People think oh, Southern bells ain't every Southern the Southern bell. What does uh, Southern bell mean? Southern bell to me is like more so like um, you come out of a nicer environment in the South. Okay. And you have more stuff, you know, and it's like even when you think about Southern bells, like. Okay. You know, yeah, real pretty, you, yeah. you know, but you also have that, don't get it twisted now, like, you know what I'm saying? And I got a homegirl that's a Southern Belle, shout out to, to Kania Hall, but um, we also got the out the mud South, excuse my language, bitches. Mm -hmm. And we, we, we grind. Right yeah, that's, that's what we do. And um, we, we grind harder, we have to grind harder because it's like, from where we come from, bitches not popping it. They're not popping it. Mm -hmm. And it's just like for us, it's just like for make people really like, you know what I'm saying? They look at, oh, you little South look. Like, they think about oh, North Girl, motherfuckers gonna come in, oh, she's like mm -hmm. aggressive, you know what I'm saying? Like, we come in, motherfuckers gonna look at us like, oh, you know, she's a little Southern girl. We 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 didn't have much to climb like from off of. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, if you a South, if you a down South girl and you popping your shit, you're popping your shit. Like, you can't, you gonna say, we don't have a lot of climb. Like, I had a friend. But like down south girl, I mean like if you look talk to like a, a up north girl, like they'll basically like they'll they gonna pop it hard too because like well I'm only speaking from my home girls that's from like New York uh -huh. city yeah like oh that shit country we come it's a lot you know for pressure behind us as well like you know what I'm saying we really had to do this we just soft like you know what I'm saying we we just might talk a little softer you know what I'm saying you might have a little soft we don't got to scream surface. everywhere but it's shit pressure. Y'all are soft on the surface. Yeah. I'll, say, I'll say this. One thing, listen, one thing I've learned these past few years about living in Charlotte is Southern women, y'all are very soft on the surface. <laughs> but beyond that, God damn. I, yo, I think it's been about, for my true, I mean, my true day-by-day -day podcast family, mm -hmm. y'all will be able to tell me based off of past episodes, I think it's been about three women on my show. I can think of three and maybe more. Shout out to Bree, Big Bree. Shout out yeah. to Jazz 0704. Shout out to Lady, Lady Remedy, all from either North Carolina, South Carolina, yes, who girl. all openly Stand admitted up. they fight niggas. I don't fight niggas, though. I'm not saying you in particular, <laughs> but I'm just saying that's the, like, they all, and they all calm, you know, chill, chill on the surface. And then we get to get... talking, and they be like, I'll fight a nigga. You know what I'm saying? Well, just in general, just fighting in general. Yeah. Southerners fight. I'll say this about Southerners, Southern women. Yeah, I ain't gonna like, no lie. I just punched a nigga in the head last weekend. Come on. Fourth July weekend. I punched him in his head. Yo, that's a, like, a, a case in point. You're number four. Yes. Congratulations. You're number four. <laughs> like, y'all fight. Like, people we think it's Southerners, nah, they be, nah, they be fighting. Then it's a video, it's a video of um these two, well, really one, it was one white dude. It was a dude from New York. I don't know where he was. He was probably in Texas or somewhere. Mm -hmm. He's like, I'm from New York. Fuck these niggas. And he got in a fight with this white boy, and the white boy dogged him. 
And that was a bad look for New Yorkers fighting the Southern. Don't southern. get don't get it twisted. Like we hold pressure too. As as Southerners, we 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 hold pressure too. It's a lot to come out of us too. You know what I'm saying? We have to fight a lot growing up. And I'm not saying fight. I'm saying like, yeah. just if you're a person of stamina, you had to really get up in there and you know, yeah, do your shit. Yeah. So it's like don't get it twisted. You know, South Southern girls. You know, stand up. I love South females. Like Me too. we don't have a lot to come out to stuff. I will say, and I'm talking down stuff. I'm not talking about. So is Charlotte considered down south to you? No. Okay, so you're talking South Carolina and lower. Lower. Okay. Yeah, that, I, I don't feel like Virginia ain't the south. I, I say Virginia. <laughs> Shout out to VA seven five seven. Yeah, I love. I fucking love this seven five seven. That is what's up. Port Smith, is... Chesapeake. Mm -hmm. What's up? Newport News. Or Newport no, News. No, no good news, what they call it. Yeah, listen, y'all know I fuck with y'all no good news. Come on, I know it. I know what it is. Norfolk, I know the name what's up? Yeah, Norfolk, all that. You know what I'm saying? I love, that is one of my favorite regions in the I fucking love, country. I, same, Seriously. VA I have Beach. hella people in 757. Yeah, you know what I saying? love I fuck the 757. And shout out to Richmond. I got family in Richmond. Shout out to Richmond. Just met some people out in Richmond just past weekend. Yeah, my dad's out cool in Richmond. Fuck. But, Petersburg, um, yeah. what's up? Uh, Petersburg, cool too. So outside of Petersburg, Richmond, and 757, I don't fuck with Virginia, to be honest with you. I'm going to be completely honest. I don't. Northern Virginia, I grew up in Maryland, so you know, Northern Virginia, that's p technically part of the whole DMV, that shit. Mm -hmm. Fuck all that. I don't give two fucks about Northern Virginia. I don't like, I'm just not crazy about Virginia outside of those three parts because for one, the fucking drivers in Virginia are the worst drivers. Statistically, they're top three worst drivers in the fucking country. Damn. I'm not just saying this to say it. Do your Googles. Damn. Do your homework. Like my man Rock say, they're fucking horrible. Damn. But um, let me let me not bash Virginia. I, I, Shout out to VA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not playing. I mean, I'm playing. I'm playing. <laughs> but I'm not playing. Um, yeah, me, I, back to Southern women just in general. Uh, like you said, the South Shore. I've heard that before moving out here. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to the South. Half people like, okay, yeah, half people like, North Carolina ain't the South. North Carolina is not the South. Mm. I can't Well, not put the it Deep no, South. It's not the Deep South. Okay. It's not Southern. It's like the culture is here is not South. Well, well, I don't know, because North Carolina got some country-ass parts. Charlotte. What? Charlotte what? It's not South. Okay, but I'll, but you said other parts yeah, of North I Carolina. I don't can't speak for that because I know I don't I never lived there. I delivered. I'm talking about from where like I see a lot of people you know that you know live in Charlotte and they say like oh you know Charlotte I don't have to see people come from New York and say oh you know like this shit's country. Yeah. This is not country. Charlotte is not country. Well, you got to realize something. This is the city. We got to realize something. I'm speaking for Northerners, even though technically Maryland is south of the Mason Dixon line. Yeah, I'm saying because Maryland is like. It's in the middle. Because when I lived in New York, when I lived in New York, they said I sound country. When I moved out here, they say like I sound from up north. Like it's it's crazy. He, you sound from up north to me. It's crazy. When I lived in New York, they said I sound country. So yeah. I'll say this about northerners, since technically I'm a northerner being mm -hmm. in Charlotte. Mm -hmm. The thing is, we want to move down south, mm -hmm. but we don't want to move to the deep south. Gotcha. Because... When we think of deep, that's that's night and day compared to up north. Definitely. Like, we think of open fields. We think of big-ass bugs. You know what I'm saying? We think of houses 30 minutes apart. You know what I mean? Like, we we think of very rural areas. Like, we don't, like, we don't, it's not welcoming when we think of this the down south, right? True. But we still want to go to the south. We still want to feel southern hospitality. We still want to, you know, get that good southern cooking. So North Carolina is like a comfortable South for us Northerners. Gotcha. That's but why so that many New sense. Yorkers and Marylanders out here because okay. it's a comfortable South. Okay. You ain't going to catch no New Yorkers in no motherfucking Alabama. That shit not happening. We ain't going to goddamn Alabama. You couldn't pay nobody from up North to go to Alabama. Listen, listen. That's when we, I, I when we think about a New Yorker in Alabama. Yeah, like, yeah. You're like, what the fuck you say? What? You know what I'm saying? Like that we still get too conf conflicted too fast. Yeah. So so Charlotte cultures. is comfortable south. Gotcha. That's why we and, and VA is like like I said, I don't consider VA the south. So, you know, I think to us, to northerners, VA is North North Carolina is where the South starts to us. Okay. But when we think of down south, down south is like South down, Carolina and below. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. we ain't trying to go to them waters we, yet. So that's why y'all can't get up in that water. Yeah, so that's why we do Charlotte. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. I love yeah. that perspective. Good yeah, job. That's exactly that's, why that's we That's a better Charlotte. perspective for all my New Yorkers. Don't cut my head off. I still fuck with y'all. It's just this is y'all example right here. 
I um <laughs> I love Southern women. I prefer a Southern over a Northern. I like I said, I don't plan on getting. I don't know if I want to get married. And I really have no fucking clue. I'm not even <laughs> thinking about it. You feel me, Lonnie? I'm not even thinking about it. But I will say this: if I were to get married, as of now, I think I would marry one of three types of women. Okay. Either a Southern girl, mm-hmm. or a Caribbean girl, or a Latina girl. I could see you at Caribbean. Jamaican women are my weakness. Do you like like? Okay, oh Lord, y'all like about what? to go over to late night day. Do I like what? <laughs> now nah, we here. This is day at night. <laughs> Do I like what? When it comes, because I, I found myself understanding that Caribbean women, they got that little spice to them, and it's it's real it's real sexy, you know. And and and, and in other words, it's real freaky. What do you mean do you by like spice? The, you, are you talking about freaky spice? Yeah, do you or like, like the freaky, you know, Caribbean women? Because I'm Caribbean women. They absolutely. Can get, they well, can get well, freaky. The, well, the thing is. Well, the thing is, so we're going down that road. Okay. I was the first. The first woman that really turned me out was Jamaican. I can see that. Yeah. Wow. Turned me out. <laughs> New York. From oh Brooklyn. Lord. From Brooklyn. He said, oh <laughs> shit. Bro- she was from Brooklyn. Well, really from Connecticut. Well, I think Connecticut, Brooklyn, all that fucking area. She was a northern joint. Yeah. Tri-state. Wow. Yeah. That- yeah, perfect, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing, you know so what I saying? love it. That's that's what really sparked it off for me. You New know York, what I mean? Caribbean. Like shout out to New York Caribbean women. Yeah, yeah. She like introduced Y'all like, are different. She introduced like just the whole fetish and kink world to me. You know wow. what I mean? Cause this was college. So okay. high school, I had bodies, but it was wham bam. I wasn't really, you know what I mean? It was like that was when high school was just like, you know, who who can rack who, them up? Who can go? You know what I mean? Right. But like she like really brought like that kink and fetish side that, out. Like that that bring bad it, gal. Yeah, bringing bringing paraphernalia yeah. to the party. I love Caribbeans. I think Caribbean women they got that that, that good spice. Even with the food, it's just like wow. Food. Oh my god. I like women as well. I can see myself with a Caribbean woman as well. Yeah. So I don't I don't, I, I don't think I would like marry a woman. Have you dated a woman? I've been in a relationship with a woman before. Yeah. How'd that go? Why aren't y'all together no more? <laughs> Over here. I think it's because um, one thing about a woman, one thing about us women, we 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 are really we know what we want. Mm-hmm. We we possessive. Mm-hmm. We ain't fucking with the fuck around. I'm definitely possessive. possessive and yeah. <laughs> and I think that uh, I wasn't ready. I, I was I, I I dated an older woman. How old was she? Uh, when I was twenty one, she was twenty. About to turn 30. Like, I think she was 30, 29, 30. Okay. And, um. Was she straight or a dyke? She was a dyke. Okay, so you dated a dyke. Yeah. Dykes usually date down. I've they noticed do. that. Yeah. Why so? It was fun. It was fun? Yeah, it was. It was very fun. And we had a ball together. Like, yeah. Like I said, I'm a free spirited person. I like to have a Did good you get time. strapped out? Um. Strapped I, up? I, I didn't get strapped out. Um, I got strapped myself out. How does that even work? <laughs> You strapped yourself out. How does that work? I never got strapped out by her. Like I never got like the okay. So you know, um, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think you would know. Um, I was gonna say it's like the actual. I'm in the sex toys. By the way, coming soon, L Ring. We, we're adding sex toys as well. That's a good market. Thank you. Yeah. But um, back they're they are like um really pretty like dildos, and they're like sparkly. Like I had like a pink little sparkly one, and mm. you know we use that from okay. time to time. But um. As far as like getting strapped down, we we, we didn't. She never strapped. She never up. strapped. Like okay. she never strapped it up. No. Okay, she never strapped up. Okay. But I'm into sex toys. I feel like people should like you know embrace sex toys. People get yeah. too uncomfortable about sex. Like, oh my god, sex toys. It's nothing wrong with sex toys. Spice I, it up. I um uh so like uh Easter Monday and it's, I only remember the date because this broke my celibacy. <laughs> <laughs> it was a girl that um you know we had sex and whatnot, mm-hmm. and she had a rose with her, and she was like. You all right? <laughs> Listen. Are those really the real deal? They really are. Yeah. So she had a rose with her, and um, she was like, can I use it? Like, can we bring it? I was like, fuck yeah. Like, what yes. the fuck? Yeah. Like, Good job. I, hey. Yo, yeah, I you have. Sorry, bring that rose. Yeah, exactly. I have shit. See? Listen, I told Listen, you. Listen, take them after date, man. Yo. Tell your girl to bring the rose. Yo, the Jamaican, sh- I, she, yo, she the first one to bring toys to the party, Jamaican Good. joint. I'm yeah, so like, I'm with all that shit. But the thing was, we never used it. Wow. We never used it. Mm. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, she got hers off before we could use it. But um <laughs> what what makes the rose so good? Like what does it do? I don't I like break it down. So um let's talk about clit stimulation. 
Which do you prefer, clit stimulation or penetration stimulation? Clit. As women, the most powerful thing on our vagina is our clit. Which is crazy because it's the most like smallest, sensitive, sensitive, smallest, little, and most you know, complicated thing. as well, right? But once that uh, rose on it, and if you mess with a uh, you know a nice piece of man, I know how to do you know do what he's doing, and you know mm -hmm. flip it, put it down, and reverse it. Yeah. Listen. Then it's lights ladies, out. It's. I, I was just talking to my friend earlier about how a lot of women do does. Do, do not get any type of orgasm and they're pregnant. They don't receive any type of uh, a rise, nothing in that nature. And, and they get up with men and uh, leave with a wet ass and no orgasm. What do you mean by pregnant? Like they get pregnant by a They dude. get pregnant and never had an orgasm. Um, and you say they, well, let me ask you this. Could, I want, I want to know, do these women tell men what can get them there? I think as women, it's, it's mostly sometimes our fault. Like, if you really put you, like, I, it was a time. I got, listen, I'm 22 years old. Listen. Yeah, you sound like my grandma right yeah, now. Yeah, I'm like, it was a time. time. Like, but I'm, listen, though. Let's, let's keep it real right now. Mm -hmm. We're keeping it all the way, honey. Mm -hmm. It was like a certain time, I point in my life. I'm like, oh shit, you know, like just penetration, good time. Mm -hmm. That shit get old. Like, okay. I'm not coming over here giving my body for no reason. Like, we, we, we got to have a nice, Beautiful time and explore. I need to, to you. You gonna get your nut off? I'm gonna need to get my uh nut off. I need to get a nice little orgasm because mm -hmm. guess what? We here right now in yeah. this moment. Yeah. And I think uh, I think it's selfish as well and, and childish as well for a man to you know a man to me will, and you know during sex will make sure like you know the person that he's having intercourse with make sure that she's pleased as well. Yeah. You know you coming off you know off your rocks off and. Uh, you, your girl over there clogging. Yeah, fall asleep. You get us all fall asleep. I, as as a youngin, I was like that. Cause I, well, that came from just not knowing. Right. But when you say it's the woman's fault, what? Why did you say that? Um, because we have to stand. We need to learn. Our, we need to take time on our bodies. Like mm. I, I recommend every woman. And like I said, sex toys coming soon. All right, we coming with that shit. But um. I always say that like women need to take like a time where like you masturbate. You see what that is. Because, like, a lot of women, you know, they, I know a lot of women that have, like, masturbated for the first time. Like I say, these, these women that have children, they married for years, and aren't, they masturbate for the first time, and they realize, like, wow. Mm. And it's like, you have to take that time to yourself and see what that's about. Because now, when you, now in front of the next motherfucker, your, your nigga, whatever, one night stand, however y'all doing it, mm -hmm. you telling him straight up, this is what's going on right now. Like, mm. I'm, nah, put it right here. Yeah. Okay, so you're saying some of the reasons why women may not fully communicate what gets them there is because they don't really know themselves. They don't know themselves. Ah. They don't take a time with it themselves. Ah, so they just, the guy, you should know. I don't know, but you damn sure should know. Yeah. I don't even know. This you is my don't. own contraption, and I yeah, don't know, saying, but man, you should. And look, a man going to tell you, I'll put it, no, put, put, put it right here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm very directive. As I'm, women, we want to please I'm our Steven men Spielberg. so bad. It's like, okay, you gonna, you know what I'm saying? You're going to always be straight, but now here we are right now. You know, this is what I need right now. Yeah. And we're going to make sure we met each other's needs. But I think a, a lot of women, we get too wrapped up in like, okay, p penetration. And I, I, me, this is my opinion. I feel like a lot of women, they, you like penetration, but you're not getting that from it. You're mm -hmm. saying that you like it because you never experienced that other side. The other side. You never even organ like you could orgasm my penetration for sure, but I'm saying mm -hmm. like a lot of women don't know what that other side is. Like, go see about it. Well, what's the and it's all subjective. It's it's different for every woman. Mm -hmm. Um, for you and just just some suggestions. Mm -hmm. Uh the better orgasm, clitoral penetration or both. I feel like if you moving it how you supposed to, it doesn't matter. Okay. Cause like Damn. So it sounds like the energy should be aligned as well, huh? I feel like that if you are, you know, um, as a man, if you if you hitting it right, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't, I, circumstances are different. Yeah. I mean, for instance, if you're if you yourself is you know you know have a sexual intercourse with somebody that you have been with m numerous of times mm -hmm. at this point, you know her G spot. Yeah. You can penetrate it, you can click play whatever, but mm -hmm. you gonna know exactly where to hit it at. So yeah. say it doesn't matter. Okay. It's more so where you, where where do you know is that? Make her be able to be like okay, because I had a conversation with my friend earlier. She said she made herself orgasm like mm -hmm. in her head. She actually had like an imagination, and I said, well, goddamn, as it sucks for him. Yeah. 
God Wait, was this just by herself or while they were having sex? When they was having sex. Okay, so she mentally went somewhere that yeah, got Yeah, she her mentally there. went somewhere else and, to, and he felt like, oh, okay, no. Well, I mean, he has something to do with it as well, right? Because he was in it. Like, so it sounds like it sounds like he was hitting it, but she was imagining Usher was <laughs> <laughs> Mr. No, have you ever had an imagine like imagination of someone else? Be, yes. be, be honest. Okay. Yes, I have. That makes me feel a whole life. I have. Like, the, I, I, I have. The, well, I'm gonna let you get to yours. The very first time I orgasmed off of a girl giving me head, I imagined oh. Pinky. Oh. Yes. Oh, pinky. I imagined her throat was pinky. Pinky's box. Pinky. <laughs> God. That's damn that's how I got really? mine off. So I you remember. imagine about some shit that you ain't even never had. Yeah. God damn it. True God. imagination. Don't even what's never. Much, I really hope that she don't even know. In what's much about say imagination? No, she would never know. This was in high school. Okay, good, good, good. All right, but yours. I was felt so bad. Okay, so um, I was you know at the time dating someone. It was just like shit just started getting like. See me, I like I like a residence in a bedroom. As you should. I'm gonna have a playroom. You like you know? Let's bring the whips out, handcuffs. Yeah. Let's do every like. Yeah. Let's let's have a good time. Let's go. Right. What the hell? Yeah, we not here for no reason. Yeah, but it was a time where I was you know messing with somebody that was regular in the bed, and it was just like okay, after this, baby, this is gonna be your last. Who did you imagine while he was hitting it? Yeah. Oh Lord, another nigga that I already fucked. <laughs> Burn. <laughs> Look, this day by day, oh. we keep it. We keep it all the way hundred. Oh shit! Well, did you and the dude that you was imagining? Did y'all ever hook up again? Um, because he must have put that. it on you for you to imagine him while. Oh, we actually did. We did. We did. We okay. did. We did. Because, mm. like I told you, if I want, I'm gonna like, have it. Like, mm. it's only if you allow me to. Right, now I ain't gonna over here take shit. Now don't get twisted. <laughs> well, nah, never mind. <laughs> 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 oh man, I haven't drank no water. Oh fucking interview. Let me drink some fucking water. Y'all, this is fucking like, with Lonnie. We we be transparent, y'all. This is yeah. where like true for the truth is. Let's go. Well, your show is gonna be called All All Walks of Life, right? All Walks of Life. I'm gonna have you on there. I'd love to be on it. You're going to be on there. You want to know something about this? Is like episode sixty something. Yes. I've never been on anyone else's podcast. Really? Never. Okay, and, you'll be my first. And I'm like itching too. Let's go. I just want to get my shit out. Like I'm I always. I'm gonna I'm gonna let you go. But I'm gonna like. Listen, y'all. Well, 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 see, the thing is, <laughs> since you'll be the orchestrator of your podcast, that's what you'll be doing. You'll be orchestrating Yeah, I, I like, have so much to ask you. Yeah, I will never, like, just go in there and just start rambling. Like, no. I know that you're the driver at the end of the day. I'm in the passenger seat. Like, uh, all it is, honestly, since you're the, you're the host and you'll realize this, is it's a dance. Right. And it's just, you're... It's a dance. You're you don't when you think about how you're gonna dance, the dance turns out bad, and you can tell yeah. you're thinking about how you're dancing. When you just dance, it's just cool. Then it's just it's just a natural flow. Like Absolutely. with with this podcast, there's not a single note. Nope. I had no idea no what the script, fuck we was gonna no talk script. about. Nope. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But that's because you get comfortable with it. That's another yeah. thing. It's of course your first episode may or may not. I don't know because you're kind of used to it. You have a you're natural at this, so mm -hmm. maybe so, but. My first episode, I had verbatim every word I was going to say on like three pieces of paper for my episodes. But, you know, like I said before, you're you're the driver, you're the orchestrator, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But you just set it up and you really feed off of the person's energy. Definitely. That's why this episode is so good. I'm feeding off your energy. Good. That's all it I'm is. happy. I was looking forward to this today. Thank you. Me too. Me too. Good. Me too. I was like, because when I, I, for a second, I thought you wasn't going to show. I'm like, damn, what the fuck am I going to do? I was gonna edit some shit. I don't know what I was gonna do with my fucking time. No, listen, I'd much like, rather do this. Opportunity, like I always, you know, see everything as like network. You know, making new relationships, making new friendships, and when we connected, you know, this past weekend, I'm like, this okay, let's go, like shit. Let's, as long as you ready, I'm. You know what I'm saying? I'm going. Yeah, if you like yeah, it, I love it. I'm, yeah. Real quick before we get into our last topic, um, like you said, we was talking this past weekend. That fucking food was amazing. I didn't eat it. Why? I left. Oh my god. <laughs> How long? And y'all were there for like a cool little minute. So you were there that whole time and didn't eat? Wait, See, hold on. Your homegirls was eating? Yeah, I left because I had to go to another engagement. Oh. Yeah, I had to go. And I feel like, you know, I'm, I'm just from July. Let's go. Let's eat. Like, okay. with the circumstance I was in at that moment, it's like motherfuckers. You wanted to eat right then and there? Yeah, motherfuckers weren't trying to feed motherfuckers. No, wait, what? No, the food was out there. I didn't know. People but, were taking to go. When did y'all come out there? Well, I was back and forth. That's what I'm saying. Sky House is right I, down the like, street. Like, when the me. food was freshly finished and it, yeah. it went right here. I came out, I stood there, 
motherfuckers saying how you know people were selling plates and stuff. I say it's Fourth of July. I'm hungry. Wait, wait, wait. Were you there when the were you there after we said happy birthday a little bit? No, I don't know about that. Okay, see, going. right after we said happy birthday, that's when the food was served. Yeah, I had no clue of nothing. And he but even I, no, he stood, he was standing in front of the thing, and then well, he was he cooking. Up. He was cooking. Yeah, he was. You know what I'm he, saying like in the other room though. When you went yeah. inside, the food was already placed. Yo, you literally left right before the food was served. Yeah. Is what it sounds like. I was like, like my homegirl was like, that food was good as fuck. Why didn't you stay? I don't know. I'm upset oh, well, for you. I knew. You went to another spot. I went to another spot. By the time you got to the spot, our stomachs were full. Pause. By the time <laughs> you even got to the other spot. Now, no, my homegirl was like, this shit was good. I was like, please shut the hell up. Well, well, was the food good at the spot you went it was, to? You know, we had some crab legs, macaroni, so we don't shit. But it sounds I decent. I know I cook for y'all. It sounds, like... yeah, shout out to Boris. <laughs> She said an African cook for him. Yeah. Nigerian. Sorry. I think they got. I, think I actually they, spoke I, to an African when I left there. And we I had think a they like to be specific. Africa's big as fuck. They did like Sorry. to be specific. I'm not sure. No. Pardon our Shout ignorance. Shout out to you. Shout out to the motherland. Pardon our ignorance. I'm not sure. But um, yeah, definitely. That food, it sounds like where you were, the food was cool. But where we, like the spot you left, all the food right, like, was. Don't rub it in okay, now. I won't. I won't. I won't. Let, it, I'm, let just, it go. All right. I'm, I won't. I Shit. Now I already came into the weekend. Motherfuckers telling me how the food was too good. I'm like, well, goddamn. Yeah, because I saw your homegirls. Crushing, I thought you was over there as well. I was going, I mean, I was, I left. Oh, man. I just, that's child, I just, I had to go. Yeah. Food. Well, I'm hungry. I'm, well, let's, let's talk about one more thing. Okay. To bring everything full circle. That's another thing you'll get good at. Kind of rewinding back to point A. Good. Good shit. As of now, you don't see yourself getting married. As of now, mm -hmm. you're 22 years old. Mm -hmm. You're saying maybe one day when that comes along. That happens a lot. Especially in the black community. Mm -hmm. And I'll even admit, I picked up this a lot from Kevin Samuels. Lord. So I'm not, I'm not ready to say I'm being ready on some Kevin Samuels shit. I'm just ready to use something, certain data and statistics that he used to throw out there a lot. Okay. And you even see it. Mm -hmm. In the black community, black women specifically, mm -hmm. from age 18 to maybe 25, it's like, live your best life. Okay. 25 to 30 is like, I don't know if he comes along, but I'm not pressed for it. Okay. Once y'all hit 30, it's like, okay, I want to get married. Okay. But by then, other races and ethnicities are already married with two, three kids by then. Okay. Which makes it harder for women to find a husband at 30 as opposed to 22. Okay. Right? Because... The prime is for women looks and for men status money. <laughs> and then women, once y'all, you know, hit 30, so, uh, not all, but some looks don't be as sharp as 22. Definitely. I agree. So do you see that as, do you see that for how I just broke it down? Do you see it as that for one? And two, do you see it as an issue that contributes to why there's so many black women over 30 Looking for a husband that don't have one compared to other races and ethnicities. I feel like, jeez, hold on. First I, off, let me take that part off. Take off. Take off. Feel like. Take off. I feel like. <laughs> I'm telling you, you'll you'll get much further in any type of conversation. Cause like I could get so transparent and it could get so different. Yeah, do. I'm just saying, don't so start with like, I feel like. I don't like. I, it's a lot for me to be like go crazy in, but shit, let's go. You got it. No, you got it. You're you're a smart girl. You got it. Go ahead. <laughs> This is your floor. Go ahead. You got it. With black women, mm -hmm. I myself, a young black woman, it's like uh, we just, as young women, we just trying to, most younger black women, let me say that, we were trying to get what we like. We just chasing after. Like, I'm speaking for myself. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm just chasing, you know, my dreams and, you know, let's go. And I think sometimes as like what I, I've, I've dated older men, like I've dated men that are over like that age caliber, which is about, you know, like late 30s. 35 and older? Yeah. Did they want to take you serious, like relationship? They they do. And I don't want them to take them serious. And you turned it down. Yeah. You were looking for that. You were looking for a good time at the time. I was actually at the bar one time and I was having a conversation with my friend and this older guy turned to us and he told us, he's like, the thing about you young women is that y'all are refreshing. Y'all, 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 y'all keep y'all make like, the older dudes feel ready, younger. Y'all are, y'all are out like y'all, are. and usually with older black women, they, as they should be, because motherfucker time is ticking. If you're into that in that moment of your life, what are we about to do? 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to play with you like Absolutely. that. Like, what we doing? Like, okay, we doing a house, we doing the kids, we getting married. Like, what yeah. we doing? What's your career for? What's okay? Let's we moving. Yeah. What are we doing? And that's like for us young women, most young women. Let me say that we just trying to grind and get to where we need to be. You know, in our career, in our lives, and you know, you know, older men get a, a nice little feel out of that. They like that. Keep them refreshed. It Keep make, them feeling young. It makes them young. feel really good. Yeah. But it also has a lot to do with insecurity, too, and, uh, you know, uh, identity crisis. So why not take that? So why not take the serious approach? with? It's just because this. I, I don't, I'm not trying to get on that, on that type of time because you ready for that. I'm I'm on my path and I'm having a good time. Like, I'm not trying to do that because you, like, no. So, Go okay. over here. Because they're Go ready for here. that, but you're not ready for that. Yeah, a lot of younger saying. women are, though, too, as well. Because they want to be taken care of. Well, that's boom by the fucking bang, by the fucking bang. It's the taking care of part. I think thirty and over is is not as hard to find a partner, but it's harder to find a partner that'll take care of you. And yeah. I mean, take care of everything. Look at Al Pacino in his fucking seventies or eighties. Just had a kid with a chick who's in her twenties. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Twenties is like the, you know, the field that men of certain status look towards because that again, it's all about prime. Yeah, the men of certain status. He's at his prime. He yeah. made six figures, seven figures, eight figures, whatever. Money, monetarily, that's his prime. And then with the women, she can work at fucking Wendy's. But if she's a fucking dime piece in her 20s, he's going to take her from Wendy's. She's going to have to work a day again in her life if she wants to be taken serious. I feel like with a lot of older men, it boosts their ego to do that. And when they meet, like, if say if you, like, you know, for instance, an older man meets a woman in her you know, mid thirties or whatever, and she's a boss ass bitch. It'll be a little bit like, and we're talking about insecure men here. We're not talking mm-hmm. about you know, nothing. We're talking about yeah. like men that usually men that I saw men that like I wanted to date in early twenties because I know I can have more advantage in all aspects, mental, financially, personality, just e- physically, sexually, everything. And you know, oh, then let's not get it twisted. If you're in your thirties period, I don't. It's nothing old about you. You you high. 30, 30 is because you're new reflecting. Like at that 20. point, I thought you were in reflection status. Yeah. Like I don't think it's nothing. I say this all the time. I think it's nothing old about thirties. There's nothing old about thirties. Nah, that's just some like social media Stupid shit. Stupid ass fucking social Are you media kidding? shit. But shit, it be it be man, it be women in their thirties looking like they fucking twenty. You and it's what I'm saying. Crazy. It, it, it can go either way, but you know, like I was saying before, is I feel like these these. Older, we talk. We're, we're we're speaking a comparison from twenties and thirties. So I'm saying older for thirty, and it's like these women they they on their shit. They're not playing that, and these niggas can't handle it. It's too much for their like you know their confidence, their ego. Let's they're like okay, let's go over here. Early twenties, bitches are trying to find a come up. Let's go say something because these old these bitches that's in thirties, they because it's their it's their. I get what you're saying. So it's not just. I, li- I like that approach. I like that you brought up that, that approach because my approach was the dudes are doing it just based off of looks. And, yeah. and your approach is no, I mean, maybe so, but also because uh, they just can take, they just, their ego is stroked more yeah. with the it's younger it, women that yeah. maybe can take advantage Definitely. more in certain fields and not in a toxic way. Maybe it is a little bit toxic. I don't know. Yeah, but I, I, do. I yeah, I, I, I get what you're saying. And that, yeah. and that, that comes, I, I like that you said that because I've always said like, you know, money don't unlame a lane. So that's like a dude that never really had what it took to get a woman off the strength of who he was. No, but he got the money, so now he can attract the, you know, whatever. Just he flashing the bread, and she he knows she gonna go for it and whatnot. And that's what that's what um I think that's what you're. Like, that's what I'm saying. saying. Right? Don't yeah. be a corner call, you know, with a dollar bill. I, I like that, and I I always say you know like um when it comes to the podcast world, one thing that makes me cringe. Like how we said at the beginning, the cringe. It's cringe. like these podcasts with like, and like dudes that are not alpha at all. Like if you sit around calling yourself an alpha, and then you can tell by how they talk, they some straight bitch ass niggas that, and they're just they're just uh, projecting. You know what I'm saying towards the women that turned them down because they corn on the cobs, like you said whole time. That shit makes me cringe, and it makes it bad for real dudes that's on the mics on podcasts, really getting their shit off. Yeah, you exactly. Got, yeah, because like, I've seen hella podcasts as well. Like one in in particular, we can mm-hmm. probably understand what that is already. On um, like a motherfucker, just like nigga, you a whole grown ass man out here, and you're. It seems like your whole objective is to like 
prove yourself to a woman. I always say, like, you're a man, I'm a woman. I don't know what it is to be a man, nor do you know, know what it is uh -huh. to be a woman. And yeah. that's just it about it. I'm not trying to compete with you. Yeah, and see, and that's the thing, again, it's, it's usually dudes like that, high school, maybe even college, never got... You never. They, they why would, you trying to compete with me? They, you can they never would've, win. They would have been lucky to grab something, one on, thing out of the whole school year type thing. But then again, they got money and they realize when they got the money, they see how it attracts a certain type of woman, and they yeah. go, "Oh, all you women ain't they, they shit." They have this whole overall thought, and it's like, "Nigga, that's where you fucked up at." Yeah, I, I really, I'm not, I'm definitely not one of these dudes that advocates for that. I think that's that some clown mean. ass that's shit. Clownery. Like you said, a dude trying to prove himself to a woman, woman is crazy because. As a man, and let me just give, as a man, you got to prove it to your fucking self and a woman will feel that energy. Mm -hmm. That's what'll really get her. When yeah. you do, when you step in how you step, because that's how you want to step for you, mm -hmm. then she will feel that shit. Yeah, she then will she'll, feel it. And yeah. she will like a confident woman. Like, yeah, we always have to divide shit. this shit down because motherfuckers, every time you say a general statement, it th they think it's that much general as not. Like, yeah. I'm not talking about like the majority of women. It's a small, this is like, if you like the men that you were used, you know, referring to just being confident and standing in your own space. It's just like a, a confident woman. I'll say, okay, I like that. Yeah. That shit's sexy. Yeah. I like that about him. And if you really, and as a man, you really step out, you step in, that confident woman, it don't matter what she doing, got going on or whatnot, she going to abide by that shit regardless. Definitely. But if you just feel like, because you got some money now that you can be put in that position, she going to bitch your ass. Here, boy. You know what I mean? She going to bitch it's you. It's not happening. <laughs> I had someone Straight tell me up. I was aggressive. He's like, you're so aggressive. I said, what the hell? Damn. All right. I mean, some women are, but it's just like, it just comes, you got to really step on that shit, man. Yeah. You got to really step on that shit. Like, not every lot, listen, a fucking, a fucking uh, hyena can't tame a lioness. You know what I mean? It takes a lion to tame that lioness. You know what I'm Definitely. saying? A hyena gonna tame a female hyena. Mm -hmm. Her dirty, funky, laughing, crackling ass. He gonna he gonna tame her, but a lioness need a fucking lion to be tamed. Oh, so shit. you know what I'm saying? That's just what that comes down to. So I, I like to advocate for that and not this clown ass shit that you see on these, you know, podcasts and YouTubes where dude gets some money and they feel like you're alpha now. Nah, yeah, no, nah, we're not doing that. Nah, if you gotta say you are alpha, then you ain't alpha. You're not, you're not alpha. Mm. Well, listen, Lonnie. God damn it! This I ain't gonna lie. This was one of my favorite episodes. Like, Yay. like I said, Hell. didn't have a single fucking note, nothing. Like I just knew I was gonna introduce you and roll from there, and we went for a fucking almost an hour and a half of straight fire. You, my friend, are a natural. I don't say that to everybody, but you are definitely a natural. So you should for sure go for all walks, all walks of life podcast. And I'm actually glad that this is like the fruition that leads up to your podcast, right? You'll be able to watch this. People are able to watch this. And then they'll be able to go and watch, you know, your episodes rolling out. And they could put put everything together. And like, damn, she, you know what I'm saying? This yeah. was her her starting her starting point. And like mm -hmm. I said, I like to throw people in a, in a, in a, in a wolf's den. And, and you goddamn came out with a, with a wolf mink on. Absolutely. Leo shit. Leo shit. Nah, but, Leo, uh, Lion. <laughs> Lioness, Leo, yeah. There you Lionhearted. Little nigga mm -hmm. from Lionhearted. Mm -hmm. But uh, what I will say is, is it's been a, definitely been a pleasure. And this is what it looks like when black people get together and great minds think alike. Absolutely. This is what it looks like. It is. Looks like, feels like, sounds like. Because y'all are listening to the Day by Day motherfucking podcast for your Day by Day motherfucking broadcast. I'm your host, Day with an I, not a Y. And I really, from the bottom of my heart, got to thank Lonnie for pulling up. Turn up. Because like I said, we just met last weekend at a fucking cookout. <laughs> and she pulled up, dropped gems, kept it real, and got her shit off Yay. to the fullest extent. Glad to see it. Um, everyone that's tuning in, whether you're watching on YouTube, listening on your respective podcast platform, if you are listening, I suggest you tune in to uh, YouTube. Great visuals. Um, I truly thank y'all. You know, I ask that you share this out, like, and subscribe. It'll help with the algorithm. Um, and then, yeah, that's just, that, that's just how we go. Also, I would hope that you, or ask that you can leave um, just some feedback for the podcast. Take two to three minutes. I'm going to tag a questionnaire in the bio of this episode. It takes two to three minutes just to help me, you know, improve the podcast and whatnot. Um, but until next time, ladies and gentlemen, make sure that y'all stay safe, stay sane, but most importantly, stay blessed. Peace. <laughs> And that's how the fuck we do it. Simple. You, yo, you a natural.